sustains me through everything I go through. The word of God supplies even more than I need. It's the word of God, y'all, that's saving me right now, going to save me from now on. I know that after I hear it, receive it, believe it. And it's when I do all that the word tells me to do. Not only my life, my circumstance, my situation, even my condition, they are never, ever, ever, I am never, ever, ever, never am I the same, never is it the same. Declare it never the same in Jesus' name. You believe it and receive it, muster it up and give God a right now praise for your right now blessing. Right now, right now, right. The Lord is blessing me right here. And the Lord is blessing me right now. I'm in his house. But right now he at my house. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm, I'm over here on Sunday. He already over there on Monday. Right now, amen. Hallelujah, amen. Even before the text, the tweet, the Instagram, the email, the doorbell, amen. The Lord is blessing me right here. Hallelujah, the Lord is blessing me right here. Now, the Old Testament book of Do the Running Man. <laughs> Hallelujah, because when I read this, I feel like running, man. Amen. Do the running me, amen. The book of Do the Running Me that make me want to do the running man. <laughs> Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. Chapter, chapter 28, amen. Chapter 28. Thank you, Jesus. Chapter 28, beginning here in verses 1 and 2, and it shall come to pass, it shall come to pass. If thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe and to do all, somebody say all, all his commandments which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high, if you hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all his commandments, all his commandments, all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all. Above how many? All of them. Above all nations of the earth. And all, all these blessings, they shall come on thee. In fact, you're going to have to fight them off because they will overtake thee. If thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Amen. Amen. Simple message today. Passing the all test. Passing the all test. Amen. Come on. Take your seats. Take your seats there. Be blowing the blowers and vacuuming with the vacuums to run us up out of here in a moment. But, but before they do all that stuff, amen. We were asked, some of y'all who may not have got the message, because I found out everybody don't always get the message and announcement. But we were asked, if all possible today, to wear shades of purple, amen. Shades of purple that were in representation and respect of the national prostate pancreatic colon cancer awareness month amen to wear shades of purple in respect amen as well as representation last month for sunday we wore pink representing amen as well as respecting the national breast cancer and mental illness awareness month amen and back then god had revealed the now next word Amen. In Hebrews chapter 13, that for those who deal with, face, go through, and experience certain things, you and I shouldn't allow them to stand alone. Amen. Amen. People go through troubles. They go through tragedies, calamities, catastrophes, sicknesses, and illnesses, pain, and all kind of other dilemmas. The Bible says stand with them. Amen. Amen. Pray with them, for them, over them. Amen. That's our encouragement to sow the seeds in the folks' life of the fruit that we want to reap in our own lives. Amen. 
Amen. That's a key already. If you want to reap certain fruits in your life, never, amen, hold back sowing those seeds into other folks' lives. Amen. I see that overwhelms you the day. Amen. But the reason why, because the writer of Hebrews says, no matter what any of us face, deal with, go through, and experience, the Lord is with us. Yeah. He never leaves us. He never forsakes us. Amen. And knowing that, no matter again what we deal with, face, and go through, if nobody else is standing with us, God is standing with us. Come on here. If nobody else is by our side, God's not just by our side. He's by our back and he's by our front at the same time. Amen. And knowing this, amen, the writer says we can boldly say, we can boldly say that the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. I will not worry. I will not be scared or afraid what man shall do unto me amen didn't he say that y'all amen amen so I myself you know I, I, I pray like I say you get up in the morning and if you wake up no matter what you got to deal and face and go through you ought to be pumped up amen yeah. because it's a sign amen that God amen has not left you God has is still with you amen if God wasn't with you, you wouldn't have woke up this morning because it wasn't the telephone. It wasn't the alarm or the cell phone. It wasn't the shake of a human hand. It was God penetrating the walls of our rooms, touching our bodies, instilling them with the breath of life that woke us up this morning. If you're in agreement, say amen. Amen. But I, I wake up every morning and I pray and I thank God. Like I said, one of my uh, usual things I will say, today I'm waking up and I already know I'm blessed and highly favored by God. Good things are happening for me right now. And I got to get out the bed because greater things are on the way. Amen. Are y'all with me? Amen. Sometimes, amen, the day makes us cover up. Amen. Stay in bed. Don't want to see the sun. Amen. Don't want to see nobody. Amen. But once again, if God didn't have a plan and a purpose for you in this day, he would not have woke you up this day. Amen. So I wake up knowing, amen, it may not be good. It may not look good, sound good, feel good. But in Christ Jesus, I am blessed and highly favored. Therefore, good things are happening for me when? Right now, amen. I got to get out of this bed. I got to brush my teeth, wash my face, comb my hair, put on some clothes. You know why? Because greater things are on the way. They're always on the way, amen. And I add to my prayers, certain other prayers, but one I want to stress and I say, man, I praise and thank God every day for divine health, amen. amen. Did you hear me? I said divine health, amen. Somebody I read in their book, they said that God's best is divine healing, but that's not true because if you got divine health, you don't need divine healing. Amen. amen. And so I have a few aches and pains now, amen, Octavia, at the age and stage of life I am in, amen, but I don't claim the pain, I claim the name, amen. Okay, y'all want me to preach anyhow, amen. No, I, I claim the name, amen, and I claim no matter what's hurting God, amen, I know you can hear this, so I am claiming divine health from the top of my head to the soles of my feet, my spirit, my body, my soul, in Jesus' name, they are all whole, amen. Because divine health heals every ache, every pain, every ailment, every sickness, every disease, anything that would hurt, harm, and endanger you in your total being, divine health, amen, brings it all back to wholeness. And so I thank God for what divine health, amen. But still and yet, still and yet, Sue, I have divine health at least two times a year. I will make appointments with my primary doctor for a full, somebody say full, checkup and physical, amen. I'm claiming divine health every day. But with my holy tongue talking self, I still go to the doctor. Now, I know some of y'all so full of the spirit, you don't want to go to no doctor. And then some of y'all afraid and scared to go see her. And they say at least once, but I go two times, the middle of the year and the end of the year. See my doctor. So she can poke, she can probe, she can prod, she can peep, and she can stick and do all that other stuff. Just to declare, Sister Deborah, I'm walking in divine. She said, you're a little overweight, but you're walking in divine health, ain't you? Amen. Your cholesterol is a little high, but you're in, you in divine. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm saying that, Brother John, because many things, amen, can be taken care of when they're small, amen, and they haven't got out of hand because 
we go get checkups and physicals. Y'all going to sleep on me, amen. Amen. God, God has a say-so in any and everything. God has a say-so in any and everything, amen. And, and, and in all the things, no matter what the issue is, no matter the illness and the infirmity, he's already told us in Hebrews 13, he can handle this. And that's our word to folk who have on purple this month like they had on pink last month. No matter what illness they're facing and dealing with, no matter what they're going through, the Lord can handle pancreatic cancer. The Lord can handle colon cancer, amen. The Lord can handle prostate, breast cancer, liver cancer, lung cancer, throat cancer, to all of them, amen. No matter what it is, because if you can incur and have anything on earth, you better know God. God can heal it from heaven, amen. Come on, if God couldn't heal any of this stuff from heaven, none of us would have none of it on. Okay, I'm going to have to preach to myself I see here today. Why can't he handle this? Because he told us, I'm able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you think or ask, amen. But notice this, he does it how? Through the power that worketh in, which means God will always do his part in the situation. But you and I got to realize we also have a part to do in the situation. Sometimes it may just be going to see your doctor once or twice a year. Sometimes with your spirits for yourself, taking that medicine, amen, and letting the doctor say you are delivered, amen. Sometimes, amen, it's just doing the thing because God leads and guides you to do the amen. Because amen. Amen. he leads, he guides, he directs you to do the thing. And sometimes we don't even know it's God who's leading us, guiding us, and directing us to do certain things. Why? Because many of us, we think like on the TV, God's going to thunder his voice out of heaven and say, thou shalt go to the doctor. And you're going to have some drum rolls, you're going to have some thunder rolling, you're going to have some lightning flashing and all that other stuff, and you're going to say, yeah, that's the Lord. I better go see the but the Lord don't speak that way. Come on, tell somebody he don't speak that way. When God speaks to us, he does not speak, amen, all the time through a loud, thundering, bass, rolling voice. He speaks to us through the spirit, and he speaks to us in a still, small voice. Preach, Reverend Green, amen. He, he speaks to us, amen, in a still, small voice, amen, because in that still, small voice, write this down, amen, he speaks through us, to us through instructions, impressions, come on, inclinations, and inspirations. Amen. Has he ever spoke to you that way? Instructions. He can be up here speaking through me. He can bring Sue up here and speak through her. Or he can bring any of us. He can bring Cameron. But if it's thus saith the Lord, he's giving us an instructions through somebody to us. Are y'all with me? Not just instruction. Impressions, amen. Impressed to do a certain thing at a certain time. Inclinations, amen. I, 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 I was just inclined to go to a doctor. I was just inclined to fill out this application. I just was inclined to give this brother a dollar today. I was just inclined. Inspirations, amen. I'm laying in my bed. I'm minding my own business. And the Lord inspires me to get up and go somewhere and do a certain thing. And that wasn't even on my schedule today. But because he inspired me to do it and I went and did it, I reaped a harvest that I was not expecting to reap that. In that still small voice, how is it again? Instructions. Come on, impressions. Inclinations. And what's the other one? Inspirations, amen. Because I have said and I heard other folks say amen, I know I should have did a certain thing now. Amen. Something was telling me I should have went over there. And you went over there and you reaped the harvest. And something told me to go over there so I could reap it. But you know what? I didn't listen. Amen. There are certain people, amen, and they're going through certain things. And the Lord says, can you take time out of your day? Go visit them. Go pray for them. Go sit with them. Go lay hands on them. And I say, well, Lord, you know I'm kind of busy today and I'll do it tomorrow. But then somebody call and tell me they passed away this evening. And I say, something told me I should have went and visited. I should have laid hands on it. I should have went and... Y'all still ain't talking to me yet. 
Amen. Come on here. Amen. Somebody said, he said, give him this, so and so. Give that to another person. Give that to somebody else. Amen. And I held on to it. Amen. And then the pipe burst this evening. Amen. And now I got to pay a whole lot of money I wasn't planning to pay because I didn't think the pipe was going to burst. But the pipe burst, amen, and something told me if I would have just gave that brother a dollar going in the snow, I wouldn't be giving this plumber $100 to fix my pipe. Y'all ain't going to. Okay. Amen. Something told me I didn't need to go out there that last night. It just was telling me, impressing me, and telling me I need to keep my so-and-so at home. But they kept texting me. They kept emailing and calling me. They started showing me these live pictures on Facebook. Hey! <laughs> and I got all dressed up. I got all made up. Went and jumped in my car, tried to fly over there and get to them. And some fool ran the red light and ran into my car. And I'm sitting there talking about Crystal. Something told me I should have just kept my rusty, dusty at. <laughs> and then when I find that out, because like I said, other folk go through the same thing. But that ain't something. Deacon Baker, that ain't something that's telling me not to do this or to do that. Go here and not go there. Give this and all. That ain't something. Look at somebody say, that's some one amen. And that someone is the Holy Spirit. Amen. When you get down there and something tell you not to go down there and you win anyway, that's, some, that's not something. That's the Holy Spirit saying don't go down there. Amen. And when you're standing next to somebody and they may tell you to empty everything in your pocket and give it to them and God's going to supply every need of your life. And when you follow that voice, amen, that something is not a some that is a someone that is the Holy Spirit. Amen. Telling you to release from what you have in your hand so God can release something that he has for you in his hand. And you got to realize God's got more in his hand for you than you got in your own hand for your Hallelujah, somebody. It's the Holy Spirit, amen. And, and so we need to be sensitive. Tell your neighbor, amen, while you tell yourself. We need to be sensitive to the leading, to the guiding, to the direction of who? The Holy Spirit, not just for heaven's sake, but for our own sake. Amen. Because the Spirit, amen, the Bible says what we really need to hear today more than the evening news, more than what they got on the telephone, Negro Net, and the Grapevine, we need to be hearing what thus saith the Lord through the Spirit to his. Some of y'all act like I'm talking foreign to y'all, but I'm going to keep talking anyway, amen. Because Jesus says that the Holy Spirit is our helper, amen. Amen. This is a Bible lesson. I tell you, it's a simple message here today. Jesus says the Holy Spirit is our helper. And you know who he sent to help? He sent to help us with us. He's helped us help us with us in everything that pertains to us. Are y'all still there? Amen. Amen. Everything, your personal life, your family life, your health, your wealth, your finances, your past, your present, your future, what has already happened, what's happening right now, what's going to happen, what you need, what you don't need. Amen. Where you need to go, where you don't need to know. The Holy Spirit is sent to do what? Help me with me and help me with everything that pertains to me. Amen. Last week, God released the now next word, amen, to back up the word he had released the week before. The week before, amen, you know, we had went through this election. Some of us, amen, the candidate we chose and how we thought it was going to turn out didn't turn out that way. And then it looked like things was just changing by the moment. It was getting ready to change even some more. And God sent that word and said, he never changes. He said, he's the same today, yesterday, and what, forevermore, amen. And so he said he never changed. That was two weeks ago. Last week, he follows up the word. He says, even though I haven't changed, he asks each one of us personally, have you changed? Have you changed? Somebody testified on Thursday, amen, about the message. I guess she was here at least, amen. But have you changed, amen? Because Paul was saying in Romans, amen, amen, I beseech you by the mercies of God that you should present your bodies, living sacrifices, holy, acceptable unto God, most sensible, reasonable thing you can do it throughout your life, amen, and never be conformed to this world, but always be open to be transformed by the renewing of your mind with the word of God for the specific specific purpose of being able to what? Prove the good, acceptable, perfect will of 
God, amen, being able to prove the perfect will of God. The number one priority to life and living, amen, should be to prove the good, acceptable, perfect will of God. Some people spend all their life trying to get all the money they can. And by the time they get ready to die, they found out they didn't need all that. Amen. Some people go out of their way, amen, trying to get all the education they can. And all, the, and all that is good, amen, but it's not better than God, amen. amen. And our priority, amen, in life ought to be fulfilling the purpose of proving God's good, God's acceptable, God's perfect will, amen. And hear me, amen. Why you say that, Pastor? Because it's the ones who God can trust rely, depend on, and count on the most, who are the ones who will manifest the blessings of God's good, acceptable, perfect will the most. The ones he can count on. The ones he can depend on. I know our faith is counting on God, but can I help somebody? God count on you. I know if I ask for some hands, yeah, you trusting on God, right? You depending on God to come through. God trusting, depending on me and you to come through. And the one whose blessings are going to be the big, bountiful, overwhelming, overflowing blessings are going to be the ones God can trust to prove his good, acceptable, perfect. I guess you're quiet because you're listening, praise God. Because the key to the manifestation and materialization of the big, bountiful blessings, amen, overtaking us, look at this word right here, it's going to be, Shirella, in passing the all test. Listen to what he said again in verse 1 and 2. It shall come to pass if thou, if you personally will hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord your God, and you would observe to do what? All. Not some of them, not few of them, not the best ones. Come on here. Not the most popular ones, but if you do all his commandments, which he commands you today, you might not have done it yesterday, but you, me and you getting another chance today. And since we're getting another chance today to do what we didn't do yesterday, we shouldn't wait till tomorrow. Why is that, amen? Because if you do what he commands you this day, the Lord is going to set you and me high above all the nations. And all these blessings, all these blessings, everything he done planned, everything he done purpose, everything he done planned, it's going to come on you. And guess what? You looking for it, but baby, it's looking for you, amen. Thank you, Lord. It said it'll chase you down. That's what overtake me. It will run you down. Amen. You won't be able to get away from God's blessing. Why? Because you passed the all. But you got to hearken to the voice of the Lord. Lord, I went to sleep last week, Sister Tina, after preaching this word, ministering this word about have you changed? And I'm asleep. Amen. And, 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 and I just got the urge that night, really early that morning, Aaron, to get out of bed and pray about things I was facing, dealing with, going through, and experiencing. And Cindy, while I'm down here on my knees, Amen. Everybody quiet. Everybody sleep. A house all quiet. I'm praying about stuff I'm facing, dealing with, going through experience, thanking God, praising God. He the solution. He the answer. He the provision. And all the rest of that. Amen. He speaks to me, and he tells me to go clean out every cupboard, every closet, every drawer, and throw this away and get rid of that. He starts saying, clean it out. Because you got some stuff in the closet. Yeah. You got some stuff in the cupboard. Right. And you got something in the drawer. So now you got some back in the trunk of your car. Right. And it's the wee hours of the morning, Dan. And so I said, okay, God, in Jesus' name, amen. I get back in bed. I click the button on my electric blanket. I put it on high. Because it was cold. Pray. And I pull the covers up, and I get a little snug, and all of a sudden, that still small voice says, now. That's what I said. I said, right now? It's like 3, 4 in the morning, Jesus. And he says, right now. Because I am preparing to lift you to a high place. I've got plans to do exceedingly 
abundantly above all you're thinking and asking of me right now, amen. And, and, and I need you to know that you cannot, y'all need to catch this, you cannot exercise a demon you entertain an amen. You, you, you can, amen, put out, amen, a demon. You're opening up the door and you're letting in. Are y'all with me? And I said, oh, my God, okay, there go all the gummy bears, all the gummy worms, all the gummy dinosaurs, the sour ones, amen, the sweet ones, amen. Got to throw them all. Amen. Somebody wondered, is that really what you had to throw out? Well, he told me to tell you that probably ain't your business what I had to. But the reason God would have me to bring up, how many times has he spoken to us about the nouns in our lives, the nouns, the people, the places, and things for the season God is leading us into, it's time to get rid of them, amen. I ain't getting enough amens, amen. Amen, I'm saying there's some people, if you're going to the next level, you can't take them with you, amen. There's some places that you have frequently gone, and I know that, 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 that you usually go because you go with the crowd and the group, but God says, if I'm going to do exceedingly abundantly above in your life, you can't keep going to that place, amen. Come on, he says, amen, there are some things, and they ain't all bad things, but some of them are hindering things, hold back things, that you're going to have to let go of those things. Why? Because once again, you cannot exercise a demon you entertain, and you can't climb a mountain that you keep sliding down, amen. Woo! And so when he says all, he don't say some of it. He don't mean a little bit of it. He don't mean not seven days a week, but now three times a week. No, he don't mean that either, amen. No, when he says all, somebody need to walk with me since you woke up now. He means all. Why? Because I'm Taylor. He's got a higher plan. He's got a higher purpose. He's got a higher place in the land of the low living, low people, low down around us, amen. God's ready to take all of us to another. And how do you get there, amen? Look at your name and say, you got to pass the all test, amen. Good God Almighty, amen. Because you can't exercise, put out, get rid of demons. You keep opening up the door, letting in. You, you're trying to put them out of your child in their bedroom, and you over here entertain them in your bed. And we wonder why we don't have no power when we clock in on work, Amen. Because the same folk, same folk that we clock in with, we just left last night before we clocked in with them this morning. And you want to pray, amen. Lord, get these folk off my back. Let me have a good day today. Lord, I, I want prosperity and increase on my job, amen. It's quiet up in here, Holy Spirit. Amen, but no, no, no. Amen, like I said, you had to get rid of all the gummy bears, all the gummy worms, dinosaurs, the sweet ones, the sour ones, you know, the peach ones, amen. How many of y'all like the little peach rings, the apple rings? Okay, why, okay. And here you at, 3 o'clock in the morning, amen. Lady Regina talking about, why are you in that closet? What you doing under that bed? What's in that box? What you got in that drawer? Why'd you just go outside? Because he said what he said now, amen. But as God is, amen, I hope, amen, somebody realize he, he's spoken to all of us in that same way, amen, about those nouns because the people, places, and things, they can be stopping us, they can be blocking us, they can be hindering us from God's highest for our lives. Are y'all with me, amen? Amen. And some people, amen, may not have realized that that was the God speaking to them, Deacon James. They just kept saying, something told me to quit eating these gummy bears. Something told me when I got ready to purchase them and they was on sale and I thought I was getting a good deal, leave them there. And then Harriet called and told me they got them at the 99 cent store. I went and told them to give me a whole case of them, amen. Because, you know, if they 30 bags in a case, that's just $30, amen. You buy them at Ralph's, that's $99, amen. But y'all better laugh at yourselves, amen. 
But I'm saying no, because many times we'll make excuses. We'll have reasons, amen. We'll, we'll sit down and want to negotiate with God. We'll, we'll give God some alternatives amen. or some substitutions, amen. <laughs> amen. Now, God, you know, uh, 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 if you bless me with this, you know if you let me get these six numbers, amen, especially, amen, that lucky number. Right. I'm going to take care of me. I'm going to take care of my family. I'm going to take care of, you know I'm going to buy Pastor Green at church, amen. Just let me hit him, Lord. Let me hit these numbers. You know, Lord, amen, you give me this job, amen. I'm going to treat people better. I'm going to be on time every day, amen. I'm going to do my job. I'm going to mind my business. God, just let me get promoted to this position. God, just let it happen for me. You, you know, God, amen, if you just open this door and make this way and you give me this car, so-and-so ain't going to have to wonder about no ride to church, amen. I will pick them up every time. They ain't even got to pay me no gas, God. I will pick them up. And God says, that's all fine and dandy, but what you going to do with the $20 you got right now? And, and what you going to do before the promotion? You ought to be coming to time on work every day right now, amen. You ought to be doing your job whether they're looking at you or don't look at you, amen. Y'all ain't talking to me, amen. If somebody you can help along the way, you should go help them along the way, even if sometimes you won't have to go out of your way, am I right? Because some of the prayers we pray to God, they ain't on the agenda today, am I right? You like the woman with the issue of blood. When God looked at his schedule today, he did not have on his schedule to heal you even though you have been going through this for 12 years, if you wanted healing, you know what you had to do? You had to crawl through the crowd, reach out and touch the hem of his garments because he didn't have you on the schedule today. You blind by the man, you sitting in the crowd, and he don't have blind by the man to open his eyes this morning, but you can't just sit there. You got to open up your mouth and say, hey, Jesus, have mercy on me, amen. And then you want God to give you everything, but you don't want to forgive folk of little, less, slow, and big things. And you holding on to it. And read it once again. You can't just pick and choose the ones you want, the ones you like, the ones that are most popular to you. He said you got to do what? All of them, amen. You got to pass the all test. Because what can hinder the new now next blessings from coming, amen, and overtaking you? It might be the old overdone and outdone people, places, and things we hold it on to. Man, not knowing if I get rid of these gummy bears, God's got great things in store for me right now. But how many of y'all thinking that, oh, just one more gummy bear ain't going to hurt Now, when he said throw away all of them, I know God even likes these sour apple ones now. I can get that. <laughs> Y'all ain't talking to me. Hey, Amen. No, no. If you don't let go of the old, the new can't come, Keita. Hey, Amen. If we don't turn away from the wrong, the right will never happen. Preach Reverend Green, amen. Amen. If we don't get rid of the bad, we'll only be hoping, wishing, and dreaming about the good, amen. Am I right about it, somebody? Amen. Come on here, amen. It, because it's not always God talking about you got to do this. I'm going to force you to do it. I'm going to make you to do this. You know what it's always is, Mother Mildred? It's a freedom of choice. That's why when you read the word right there, that little big word should stand out real big. The big word is if... He ain't forcing you. He ain't making you. He ain't threatening you. He just instructing you. He just impressing you. He just inspiring you. Come on, he just giving you an inclination to do this thing. Oh, y'all ain't shouting with me. And God, why would you be instructing me, impressing me, inclining and inspire me to do this thing, amen? Because, amen, until you let go of this certain thing, the real thing I got for you, I can't let go of that. Still a little quiet, though. The all test, amen. Tell somebody, just tell yourself, all means all. All means all. Amen. Whether you at church or you ain't at church. 
Because I know sometimes we want to be all spiritual and say, well, he's just talking about when we had church and around church folk. And then around folk, we want to act churchy around. But he, he not talking. Because all mean what it mean? All means when you at a restaurant and somebody give you good service, before you tip off the door, leave a tip on the table. I ain't getting a lot of amens, though. I got about five of them, Mama Jesse. Because I think we got some that just tip on out the door. Just. When we in the store, I know the line is long, but you with your Holy Ghost church going self, you should not be the one cussing the loudest in the line because the line is. And then when they give you too much change, you don't walk out the door talking about, thank you, Jesus. I done got me a blessing today. Because stuff like that happens. Why? Because it's all in the all test. Once again, you're at work, amen. No, don't show up five minutes late like you do to church 15 minutes. No, show up five, 15 minutes early, amen. Give you an honest day work, amen. Whether they're looking at you or not looking. And then when you go home, don't have all of the officers' pins, scratch pads, amen, paper clips, uh, tissues, amen, toilet tissue, napkins, tea, amen, cookies, amen. Oh. Come by your house and you got all these pens and you got you got Bigelow tea, you got Earl Grey, man, you got lemon twist, man, you got mint juice, and, and wait, I got it from work. They gave it to me. They gave it, okay. <laughs> Y'all sitting up here wanting to laugh about it. Then you then, then you leave work and you come home. And the dog like Scooby Doo say, here we go. <laughs> dog go hide up under the couch. Kids get in the bed like they sleep. Husband and wife, amen. They go out the back door and sneak around the house and No, the all test. I I'm saying we're not just supposed to be good to folk because they good to us. We good to folk when they ain't good to us. We're still doing the right thing when the wrong thing is happening to us. Come on here, amen. We, we, we still, amen, holding our head up when things are happening to us, when we ought to hold our head down, amen. Sometimes the blessing and breakthrough will come because you're being neighborly to a neighbor who ain't neighborly to you, amen. We got all this cake and pie over here. We can't eat it all. We don't need to eat it all. Would you like some cake? In fact, would you like a whole cake? Because we don't need to throw this good cake out, amen. And then they eyes bucked because, amen, they've been, amen, playing loud music, smoking weed all in the background, amen, and all that in the backyard and all that other crazy stuff, amen, letting their yard, leaves grow over in your yard. You've been asking them, amen. They've been ignoring you, laughing at you, mocking you and all that. And now, amen, to just turn the situation around, we want to offer you this cake, amen. Will you? No, the Lord works in mysterious ways. Tell somebody his wonders to her. Preach, Reverend Green. I got to close this, amen. Got to close this, but y'all, y'all, well, some of y'all knew we were having Thanksgiving service on Thanksgiving morning. Lucius, you got there a little late, but you made it and things, but on Thanksgiving morning, amen, we, we had service and then Dick and James, we were going to feed the homeless folk. And I knew because God had impressed me and he had inspired me. And I was inclined to go after church to feed these homeless folk. First of all, I had to get to church and I was there. When I got there, you was on the steps with somebody else. And I was like, what's up with this? It ain't 9 o'clock, 9 o'clock, amen, and everything. Because that's what I feel, that 9 o'clock is 9 o'clock. And I'm ready to have church. And when we get in there and everything else, and we have church, but it's time to go. And then uh, I saw folk didn't want to shake my hand and hug me after church because they was like, you know, they want me to say, are you going with us to feed the homeless? And I knew people had stuff to do because I had stuff to do. 
Man, let me tell you, uh, 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 I had smoked all these meats, Thelma, amen, for a Thanksgiving dinner, amen. I had uh, 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 been working because we were having some guests come over to the house, so I didn't call you, Aaron. I called another brother, Mother Tell him, amen, because we needed a little paint and patching and all that stuff because you can't just let folk come to your house and you got all these cracks and dust and dirt. So we, we hired this brother, but you know, sometimes I'm understanding why you can't always hire the brother because, you know, they come one day and then they don't come the next day and then somebody lost their shoes this morning. We got to find their shoes and, and, and then, you know, uh, uh, but I meet you in the morning, amen, but then there goes the voicemail the next morning and everything, but then, amen, they needed, amen, to get an advance, amen, on their payment, amen, they get an advance of more than half, Brother Ed, amen, and then they don't show back up while y'all still so... So we still had a few cracks in the wall, so and still a few boards that hadn't been painted and all that other stuff, but hey, the folk were still coming and everything else. And then above all of that, amen, my son came home the other night, had to get out there in that traffic, go wait for him to come down off the plane, get amen in the car and all that other stuff coming on home. And then after all of that, still had to stop and pray and meditate and get ready for it. Now next word, God wanted me to deliver on Thanksgiving morning. But in doing all of that, still and yet, I knew, God, you still wanted me to take this food to these folk down here. And so, hey, I was there. My two sons were there. Praise God, Deacon Marshall, Deacon James, amen. Sister Missionary Gwen was there, amen. And the Oklahoma tornado even showed up, amen. He went. Okay, if y'all didn't come to church on Thursday, y'all missed the Oklahoma tornado. They'll tell you about it later, amen. But the Oklahoma tornado, he's there. He's there all there. But I'm saying that to say this, amen, because this is how I feel about it. God will help me to help other folk too. And he will bless me to be a blessing to other folk. Amen. He, he will enable me to do for me, but I can enable to be do for some other folk. And, 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 and it did take a little time. And I told the guests they had to arrive a little later, Crystal, amen, because I knew God wanted me to go down here and give this food out. And we did do it. And some of them, amen, they were out of their mind. They were saying things, but I was saying, God bless you anyway. But then some of them just looked up and said, thank you for showing up. Amen. amen. It was like, thank you for coming. And then I was telling you about all these meats I had smoked and stuff. Because a friend of mine had smoked this meat, and he let me taste it. I said, oh, that is good. And you smoked it? He said, yeah. And so the other day, he told me, uh, 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 did I want to use his smoker? for Thanksgiving. And I said, well, we were going to fry the turkey and do all that, but you know what? Bring the smoker on. We're going to throw all that stuff in this smoker. Just show me what to do and how to do all this stuff. And boy, we smoked this. I, I wish we had some left, right, Cameron? <laughs> <laughs> oh. But this is the thing about it. Because the guy let me use the smoker. But then he called me last night. He said, well, how did your meat turn out? And I said, oh, man, it was off the chain. And it's off the bone now, amen, really, you know. Man. He said, yeah. He said, well, the smoker's yours now. I said, what? I said, no, man, no, no, yo, you know, I'm a, I, I got it cleaned up. I'm bringing it bring back. He said, no, you can have a smoker. I'm going to go get me another one. I've been looking at it and everything else. I said, well, you know, when after I smoked these meats, I was uh, planning in my mind to get up and go to Home Depot Friday for Black Friday to see if I could find one for myself. And I was laying in the bed, amen, Friday morning, getting ready to get up, Lord, get out there with them crazy folk and fight over these drills and these hammers and all that other stuff at Home Depot. And the Lord said, no, nah, you just sit tight and watch the football game. I said, all right, Jesus, we'll just get a smoker another time. <laughs> Not knowing that God was already working on this brother's heart to sow this smoker into my life, amen. Y'all ain't talking with me yet. Not knowing, amen, and I don't know if it was because we took time out to give somebody else a meal, to feed somebody else, clothe somebody else, help somebody else, but I know you can't never go wrong sowing seed in the other folks' life that the fruit you want to reap in your own. Amen. You can't never go wrong, people of God. Today, and I got to close, it's getting that time, and I have to remind folk about this a lot of times, that today, Amen. The fourth Sunday in November, 17 years ago, 
this time last 17 years ago on the fourth Sunday in November, we were out in Venice at Pastor Marvis Davis Church. We had just gone through this election that had split up the St. Matthew Baptist Church. That's why it's a Baptist church and a Tabernacle Praise Church and things. And the week before, we were at Dr. Harwood's church. And this week, we were at Pastor Davis' church. And, and, and it was that Tuesday night, that group that was together. We went over to True Zion over here on Manchester, Dr. Lovett's church. And we were just gathered in a circle. And we were praying, you got us out here, Lord. Now, what would you have us to do? and left that prayer meeting that night after praying with those people about what to do and, and, and tell them, Sister Henderson, amen, she was a member of Baptist Temple Church, amen. She can tell you, amen, and Dr. Davis had come to y'all's church that Sunday afternoon after we had left his church that morning because it was y'all's anniversary. And your then pastor, Dr. Don, you ought to tell him, Mother, amen, Mother Henderson, amen, that he was wondering how he was going to keep this church afloat and going because they were facing some challenging times. And Dr. Davis said a few things about us to him. And next thing you know, somewhere between Sunday and that Tuesday, Wednesday, God has spoke to Dr. Don and said, call Pastor Green up. And when he called him up, he said, you can come over to the Baptist Temple. You can open, use the church over here. And it was the first Sunday in December, y'all, that the St. Matthew Tabernacle Church started coming into what we know it to be today. Amen. 17 what? Years? And you ought to have been there, Aaron, because it ain't kind of like it is now. When folk were coming to church, all of them, all of them, they had enthusiasm. They had excitement, amen. They had initiative and expectation, amen. You didn't have to ask nobody where they're going to be there, did they want to do, because they all had willing, wanting, and waiting spirits, amen. I had to keep them out of each other's way, amen, because they all wanted to do all the things they by themselves, amen. Tell them, Deacon Baker, that's when you could really swing a hammer and saw a saw. Am I right about it, DK, man? And him and his brother, they was working that hammer. Oh, Y'all ain't feeling me yet. And like I said, excited, enthused. Come on here, amen. Expecting, initiative, giving the effort, willing, wanting, waiting, spirit, amen. Why you bring that up, Pastor? Because the same spirit we had back then to bring the blessing in the manifestation, got to have that same spirit right. I, I know it's 17 years later. I know we're 17 years older, many of us. I know Dick and Baker, many of us can't swing the hammer like we used to swing it, but we show, can show somebody else how to swing it like we used to swing it. I was looking at the football game, amen, and when I looked at the players, not just on the field, there were some people on the sideline. And the people on the sideline, I could identify with more than the ones on the field. Because the ones on the sideline now, Anthony, were the ones playing in the day that I was really caught up in this thing. And now they had got too old to run down the field, to carry the ball, to make the block and all that. But you know what they were doing now? They were helping the ones who could carry it now. They were inspiring the ones who could run down. Y'all ain't y'all looking at me funny out there. Run down the field right now. What I'm saying, amen, that God, no matter what age and stage of life we're in, tell your neighbor God still has a plan. God still got a purpose. God still got a place. God still got a position for you and me, amen. I close this word, amen. Close this word, Pastor Green, amen. Could it be that the release of the supernatural, because that's what we need, extraordinary, unusual things in our life, not just collectively in church, but some of us need a supernatural move of God outside of this church. Some of us don't need the usual thing to happen in our home. and family. We need something unusual to happen. Amen, Pastor Green. Could it be tied to passing the all test? That God just allows us to go through these certain things at certain times to see if we're going to give it our. When you look in the word, all the blessings that came upon anybody, didn't it come after they did all they were supposed to do? Or did it not come because they didn't do all? Man, they said, we ran out of wine, Jesus. You know what he said? Fill all the containers with water and pour them out. It didn't make no sense. 
But after they filled them all up, water turned into wine. We got 5,000 or more people out here, Jesus, that need something to eat, and we don't have nothing. All we have is a few loaves of bread and a couple of fish. He said, sit them all down and bring all that you have to me. And didn't little become much because they put it all in. Y'all ain't talking to me. Remember, Naaman was full of leprosy. He was this mighty man of valor and in the army and all that other stuff. But he had contracted leprosy that he couldn't get healed of. And when he sent and talked to the man of God after being told, just go ask the pastor what you should do. And the pastor didn't come out, but he sent Josh out there to tell him. The pastor said, just go duck seven times up there at Baldwin Hills Lake in that muddy water. And you're going to be all right. He must be out of his mind. He must be, he ain't coming down his, no, he ain't coming down himself. He busy right now. I think he finishing up the turkey that he smoked the other day. He can't come down right now. And Naaman got all upset. But what did his, what did his servant say to him? He said, Master, what he asking you to do ain't no big thing. And if what he said for you to do was going to put you on the headline of this morning's paper, put you on the evening news, everybody talking about it all over the city, you would have jumped at the chance to do that. But he just saying, duck your head under this water seven times and you'll come back clean. What do you have to lose Doing all you've been instructed, you've been inspired, you've been inclined to do. Y'all know the story, many of y'all. He went and ducked his head, one, two, three, four, five, six, and nothing happened. But when he did all he was supposed to, when he did what? All he was supposed when he did all the seven time and came back up. Thank you, sir. Thank you. God says, I want to know if I can really trust Abraham. Does he really love me more than anything? Abraham, take Isaac up on that mountain and offer him for a burnt. Give, give your all, your only son. Abraham grabs the boy, takes him up to the mountain, tells his servants, we'll be back down in a few moments. We're going up here to do all that God told us to do. He ties the boy up. He starts the fire. Amen. Isaac looking at him, talking about, Dad, I see the fire and, and, all, and, and all coals. And, but where is the lamb for the sack? Oh, God's going to provide. And he lays the boy out on the altar, and he draws the knife. And when he gets ready to bring the knife down, read the text, the Spirit of God yells out to him. The angel says, hold thy hand. Why? Because now I know. Now I know. Oh, yeah. Now I know you will give your all for me. And when I can see you will give your all for me, I'm obligated to give my all. Now I know. Can God look at any of us today and say, now I know, because they passed the all test. I've allowed them to go through this. I've allowed them to deal with that, face that, put in this position, that position. But still and yet, every time I gave them an instruction, every time I inspired them, every time I gave them inclinations, they didn't make excuses. They didn't have reasons why. They weren't talking about I had to help Mother Green and I would have came over there, but I had to do this for Aaron and all the rest of that. No, they did all that I told and asked them to do. And now, because they've done all, look at this. All these blessings will come upon them. All these blessings. Y'all should be excited about it, amen. Will what overtake them? They will be blessed in the city. They'll be blessed in the field. Y'all ought to read it. They'll be blessed in the fruit of their body. They'll be blessed from the fruit of the ground. Their cattle will be blessed. Amen. The increase of their flocks. Amen. They'll be blessed in the basket. They'll be blessed in the storehouse. They will be blessed when they come in. They'll be blessed when they go out. Amen. They'll be blessed that their enemies will leave them along. Amen. In fact, the enemy will come at them one way and they're so blessed, the enemy will run from them in seven different ways. Amen. The Lord will command a 
blessing upon their storehouses, amen. Everything they set their hand to, amen, God will give increase to. Why? Because when you give God your all, look at somebody and say, God will give you his. And that's why now I realize he was asking, have you changed? Have you changed? Have you changed? It don't matter if it's 3 o'clock in the morning, 4 o'clock in the morning. And God says, clean out every cabinet, every cupboard, every drawer, every closet, every trunk. No, God, the reason I'm going to let it go for you, because you're ready to let the best go for me. Somebody need to read it one more time. I know it ain't the kind you want to run up and down and around the building like the Oklahoma tornado and shout and scream and all that. But then when I just think about, amen, where it says here, amen, again, in, in verse number one, he wants to set me high above all nations. How many of y'all would it just be good to be above every problem, every trouble, every worry, every fear, everything that's making everybody afraid, God just lifted you above it all. If that's you, I would just be sensitive to hear what the Spirit was saying to me right now. Because he's not going to speak real loud, yell, scream, thunder it out of heaven, but in that still small voice, He'll be saying, do this, don't do that. Give this up, hold on to that. Walk away, let it go. Don't sign that. Oh, you ought to sign that. God will give you divine direction to a divine destination. And what's in that destination? Everything God's got planned, everything God's got prepared, everything God done promised you and me. Because you read this whole chapter, and round verse, what, 13, 14, it switches. And it stopped talking about Mother Bertha, the blessing coming on us. It started talking about the curse. And the curse is what God talked to us about a few weeks ago, that the year we're headed into is the year of grace. When God will release, amen, all we need through Christ's expense, meaning Jesus is going to pay for whatever we need, whatever we need, whatever we need, physically, mentally, spiritually, financially, tangibly, intangibly, Jesus is going to pay for it all. Have you ever used Jesus' currency to buy anything? Because he don't use dollars and bills and coins and checks and credit cards and debit cards. You know what the currency of Jesus is? Faith. All right. By faith, you can get your healing, your deliverance. By faith, you can get that house and home. By faith, you can get your family back together. By faith, amen, your health can come back whole, amen. By faith, whatever you're lacking, missing, vacant and void, and impoverished areas of your life, by faith, amen, Jesus done paid it. Because at Christ's expense, grace, God redeems a cursed earth. Don't just read the blessings. Start reading about the curses as well to just know that God done got you out of that already. Hallelujah. And guess what happens when you get out of it? You'll be able to get somebody else out of it. I think, Lavarette, that's going to be our job moving not just into the new year, moving into this new place y'all keep praying and asking God for to take us to. It ain't going to just be, Sister Beverly, for us to sit up in the seats and eat the chicken and all that. No, we're going to invite somebody else to come sit in these seats with us and eat some chicken with us. Too. And folk going to know, amen, you go over there to them folk, you can get some help. You can get some turnaround. You can get some breakthrough. You can get some change. I know y'all ain't want to shout about it, but just encourage somebody. Let's pass the all test. Come on, get on your feet. Get on your feet. Got to get up out of here, amen. Hallelujah. Come on, give God a hand of praise, y'all. Give God a hand of. He said, if thou hearken diligently to the voice of the Lord thy God, observe and do all his commandments today, the Lord thy God will set us on high above all the nations, and all these blessings will come upon us. 
I asked him to play Blessings of Falling. You can still play it. Play it. Blessings are falling on me right now. Favor is falling on me right now. Joy is falling on me right now. Peace is falling on me right now. Turn around and fall. How many of y'all going to confess that yourself? I'm saying it for me, but you got to say it for you. It's happening right now. Every head bowed, every eye closed. God, we thank you for your word today. Uh, after Thanksgiving word, God, in line with the words you have released unto us, God. God, amen, you have spoken to us, Heavenly Father, that you never change, but you call us to make change. And the changes you call us to make, God, they may just be to pass the all tests, God. We can pass the all tests, not only small things, big things, not only little things, but great things, God, are being done in our life. And for that, Jesus, we want to say thank you today, God. Open the heart, the eye, the ear, the spirit, the mind today, God. The seed of this word will penetrate into our hearts, taking root to bring forth the fruit, God, to your glory your honor and your praise God we say hallelujah thank you Jesus and bless you for God releasing blessings unto us and it's in Jesus name we pray we praise always prevail while his about eyes are closed saints are praying anyone in the house amen today amen we don't want to leave here today no one in a right standing right relationship with the lord jesus christ amen today we extend the invitation of salvation amen we extend the invitation of a right relationship with jesus christ amen who knocks on the door of all of our hearts desiring to come in our lives not just today but coming in our lives to stay, to be our God, to be our Lord, to be our Savior, to not just be the provider, but to be the protector, to not just be the one who leads us, but the one who feeds us, amen, the one who keeps us, amen, the one who covers us, amen, the one who provides and protects us today, amen. I know I'm saying a mouthful in a little bit of time today, but today, amen, is simple as A, B, and C. Asking God, believing in God, calling upon the name of God, you can be saved today. Not just saved from a hell we can go to at the end of life, but saved from any hell, any trouble, any trial, temptation, or test we can go through in life today. Today you have been trying your way, this way, that way, all kind of ways. Today we extend to you an invitation to try and trust God's way, which is the best way for you. Amen. Don't hesitate. Don't wait. Tomorrow, the next time, the next service, the next opportunity may be too late. Today, we have a choice. We have a choice. That's why that little two-letter word stands so big out in the text today, if, amen. Because if stands for choice, amen. And then if you don't make the right choice, amen, you might be taking a wrong chance, amen. And today, God doesn't want you to make, take a wrong chance. He wants us to make the right choice. As God reaches out to you today, reach out to him, amen. As you hear his voice saying, come unto him, don't hold back, don't hold out, don't wait, hesitate, procrastinate. Today, let go, let God. Let go and let God, amen. Today, amen, you say, Pastor Green, I'm in right standing with the Lord, amen. But today he leads me, amen, to commit and connect to the body of Christ, his church, amen. The church, amen, are the people that God helps in this day and time. The church are the people God benefits. He betters their life. He blesses them, not just to receive blessings. Hear the word today. He wants to bless us so much because other folk in this world are going to need blessings today. God wants us to be the conduit that he not only sends blessings too, but we're the conduit God can even send blessings through. Amen. Today, amen, you're not part of the church and God leads you. God guides you, directs you. Yes, we want you to be part of the stop. Yes, we want you to join and be a member, amen, in this membership. But you got to ask God directly, God, where would you have me to be? God, what would you have me to do? Follow the voice of God, amen, and hear the word today. The blessing, the blessing will come upon you. The blessing will overtake you. Last invitation. Some people say I'm in good standing with God. Good standing with the church. Today, Pastor, you talked about the Spirit of God helping us. I need his help today. 
I need his help today to help me with me. Not only in church, like you said, out of church, at work, at home, amen, casual living, business living, family living, every area of my life. I want the spirit of God to take hold. I want the spirit of God to take control. I want him to enable, empower, and equip me to do that which God has called me to do. I hear the word of God saying, God shall bless what I'm doing when I'm doing all that God is blessing. Amen. Today, amen. Pass that all test with the help of the Holy Spirit. And then today, let's pray over somebody for divine direction. Divine direction, amen, that God would lead, God would guide, God would direct them in the path, purpose, and plan he has for them. Amen. That you will know for a surety, amen, that God will confirm by the Holy Spirit, amen, what to do, how to do, amen, what to be, how to be, how to give, what to give, amen. Today, amen, no mistakes when you let God lead the way. Today, don't be ashamed, amen, don't be afraid, don't be intimidated. Right now is a let go, let God moment, a let go, let God moment, amen. When you let go, watch what God lets go. When you let God, watch what God lets happen, amen, in your life. Is there another today in Jesus' name? Is there another today? Amen. There they are, amen. Come on, the rest of y'all, lift your heads, open your eyes. Stretch your hands this way, congregation. Let's pray for and over these people. Let's ask God today, amen, to supply their every need. That's what you need to pray. Simple prayer. God supply those people's every need. If you pray in people's time of need, God will supply their need. If you're ever in need, you'll be amazed who God will touch and bring and send to minister to you in your time of need. God, in Jesus' name, we thank you for these who have come. Before they come you knew the day God the 27th of November they would be standing here right now God now God release unto them the direction the instruction and guidance for their lives we're praying for those who have come for salvation come in their heart today God come in their hearts to stay we're praying for those uniting and connecting to the ministry today grow us all in grace and in the knowledge of you for the one who needs the imparting of the Holy Spirit God let them yield and give themselves to the leading God directing, amen, of the Holy Spirit today, God, in Jesus' name, and to the one who divine direction, open up their eyes, their hearts, their spirits, their minds today, give them divine direction, make it plain, make it clear, God, simplify the steps right now, God, that leads into that which you have planned, purposed, and prepared for their life, however it is, many people, different needs, but you're the God above us all, the God who can help us all. And it's in Jesus' name we pray, we praise, we prevail. Let each and every one say amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Encourage somebody today, amen, and tell them God will give it all to you. But give him your all, amen. Everybody put your hands together and give God a praise in the house. Give God. Woo. Blessings are falling, are falling, are falling. Blessings are falling like that. All right, we're getting ready to depart. The hour is spent and the time is gone. Amen. Let me say unto you one more time, this Tuesday and Wednesday are our prayer and word line mornings and evenings. Tuesday morning, amen, Wednesday morning, 6 a.m. sharp. We're on the prayer line praying one with another for another, standing in the gap. Amen for, amen, not just ourselves and the church, but the community, this city, the country, this entire world. Much prayer, much power, little prayer, little power, no prayer, no power at all, amen. Hear me, today, amen. I'm asking everyone, all of us, somebody say all of us, all of us, Lucius, this Tuesday night, Join us on the word line this Tuesday night, all of us. We're going to pray. We're going to prevail. Stand together. And the prayer we prayed 17 years ago at True Zion, amen, we're going to pray that prayer again on Tuesday night, y'all, amen. God, show us and point it out and make it plain what to do, where to do, and how to do. Will you join me Tuesday night, amen? Let me give you that number right quick, amen. Some of y'all don't have it. I don't know if they got it printed up. But I need everybody on the line, all of us, all of us, 712, Erico, 775, 7031. 
Amen. I, I guess you're not right because you have it, but I'm going to say it again. Area code 712-775-7031. The operator will say, what is your access code? Punch in 814-352-108. 814-352-108. Amen. Once again, 712-775-7031. Access code 814-352-108. We all need to call in Tuesday night, 7 o'clock p.m. 7 o'clock p.m. Be on the line with us. And then on that day, amen, this is what the Lord tells me to tell all of us to do. Fasting and praying, 7 a.m. all the way up until that prayer time of 7 p.m. Amen, Pastor Green. 7 a.m., 7 p.m. Amen. Some of us, like pastors, you don't ate too much turkey and roast beef and all that already, so it ain't going to hurt you, amen. It's going to help us. On the serious note, amen, I'm hearing the word of God through this text, through his word, ready to take stop to a higher level, to a higher place. And got to pass that all test. Tuesday night, 7 p.m., Join us. Deacon Danny has the bottles in the back for donations for the homeless and the hungry and the hurting. He's holding that up. If you want to drop things in there, drop that in. Amen. Two more announcements. Wednesday night. Somebody say Wednesday night. Wednesday night I've been asked to come minister the word at the Word Center International Church, Lucius, 5414 Crenshaw Boulevard at the corner of Crenshaw and 54th. Dr. Allen and Marvine Wright are the co-labors and pastors. The Word Center Church this Wednesday night. It'd be good, Brother John, to see all of y'all in the house Wednesday night, 5414 Crenshaw Boulevard, corner of Crenshaw and 54th street amen not tomorrow but the following monday i've been asked to bring the word at the minister's conference at the mount moriah church on figueroa off of vernon avenue amen that'll be 12 30 12 45 depending on the new business and old business they get through with lucius on the next monday the 5th of december once again octavia those who can make it it'd be good to look out in the audience and see your faces amen pastor green amen somebody all right, amen. We're worshiping the Lord and giving and going. If you got your gifts together, come on and stand on your feet. Amen. Other announcements, other direction, instruction. We're going to get it to you sooner than later, amen. But join with us, like I said, Tuesday night. We got to move forward, people of God. We got to move higher, amen. Love David, amen. He ready to come in, so we got to go, amen. But we can't be going on David's time because you know his time is his time. Am I right? Amen. Come on, lift those gifts to the Lord this morning. God in heaven, we thank you. We praise you today. You blessed us to be in the house, God, and you blessed us in this house today. Thank you, God, for your blessing upon us all, God, and the word you released to us to pass this all test. All you call us to do, all you call us to be, all you call us to give, God, willing, wanting, and waiting to do it all today. God, we release the seed and need of our lives, tithe and offerings in your hands. God, release increase upon these seeds, decrease and remove every need right now. According to your word, a good measure pressed down, shaking together, running over, above, and beyond. Expectation and worldly demonstration floods our life, and for that, thank you. Thank you as we leave the place. We're covered with your grace. Angels in charge. The blood is applied. No weapon formed against us, God. Prosperous, because in you, through you, and because of you, God, we are already more than conquerors. We bless your name. Hallelujah, God, when we say bless you. And we bless you for it all, through it all, and in it all. In Jesus' name, we pray, praise, plant, prosper, and prevail. Let the people of God say amen, amen, amen. While we're leaving, us, the party. Is y'all's party this weekend?